All right. So we talked about the very specific method of, of simulating sample distributions, like take three hamsters at a time, compute their means, right? Now I'm just going to say that those same four steps, but I'm going to say it in just more general terms. Take a random sample of size n from the population, right? Whatever your population is, whatever your n size is, your sample size is. Then you compute a summary statistic. And this could be um, the mean, uh, median, it could be mode, it could be variance, right? It could be a whole bunch of different things, right? So all those summary statistics we talked about earlier, um, it could be any one of those things. Um, then you repeat one and two many, many times. And that's the simulation part where we're pretending to do this many, many times, right? And that's why it's really helpful um, that we have computer programs that can help us do this many, many times. And we don't have to actually draw you know, beads from a hat or something. And then finally, we want to display and examine the distribution of sample statistics. Um, statistics. So we'll have a whole bunch of means, right? Or we'll have a whole bunch of variances or a whole bunch of standard deviations, right? Um, or interquartile ranges, you know, whatever you want, right? And um, in that way, this is the general method of simulating the sample statistics. Once you have that simulation, this is how to go from, uh, so this part is going from the known population and Usually, the known population is the random process. That's sort of the default. Because it's hard to generate like non-random non processes, but it's really easy to generate random processes, right? And then we get our sampling distribution, right? So this part is this arrow right here, simulating. Simu I'll put simulate, right? So that's that part. Now, there's another part. And that's the part where we now compare to sample, right? Or rather, we compare sample to the sampling distribution, right? And we decide likely or unlikely. Right? So that's another part that we haven't talked about here. But in order to do this, what you need to do is compute the summary statistic for your sample. So if you have a whole bunch of variances here, you need to excuse me, compute variance for your sample. And then you compare it to your sampling distribution. And we make a call. Is it likely? Is it unlikely? All right, but even though we know all this stuff, there are still some little bugger questions that remain. So in these cases, we know what the population looks like, right? Like we have like a group of hamsters, right? And, and we know what it looks like. And um, we're generating these random processes, right? So um, what happens when we have no idea what the population looks like? We don't have a nice list of 10 hamsters. What if we want to know stuff like, you know, what if you randomly draw from any high school student in the US? We don't have all those numbers, right? Like, in order to do the sampling process, you would have to have, you know, all the uh, giant list of, you know, all the, let's say, GPAs of um, high school students in the US and then pull randomly from them. What if you don't have that population? Then you're screwed, right? Um, also, can we have sampling distributions for summary statistics other than the mean, right? Because we've only really looked at the one with the mean, right? Um, and what do those look like, right? Um, so we have a sort of answer for this, yes. But we want to know, you know, can we just pick one randomly? Like, how do you know which one to use? And then the third un sort of unanswered question is, um, how do we know whether a sample is sufficiently unlikely? So, so far, we've been just eyeballing it. Like, we look at it and we say, that seems unlikely. 2%, that seems unlikely. 5%, that seems unlikely. 10%, that seems more likely, right? We're just like making a call, judgment call, right? But how do we know whether it's truly unlikely or it's just our opinion? Um, 
So do we always have to simulate a large number of samples in order to get a sampling distribution? Because that seems like that's going to be really hard to do, right? Um, and so these are just some questions that remain, but we just went through the intro, so it, these will be answered later on. Example two, sampling distributions are distributions. What might be the best way to describe sampling distributions? Well, let's think about how to describe regular old distributions. Remember shape, center, and spread? Well, maybe that will apply to sampling distributions. Shape, center, and spread. All right, example three. Three very small populations are given, A, B, and C each with a mu of 30, right? So this is a truly small population. There's only um, two things, two items in this population. There's only five items in this one, and there's only three items in this one. Uh, match these to the corresponding sampling distribution of the sample mean, n equals 2, assume replacement. So if you draw two out, you, you put them back, um, or else after once, you'll be gone. It, this will be gone. Uh, assume replacement below. Okay. So let's look at these. This one, it seems to go from 10 all the way to 50. So you could have a, a, a mean of 10. You could also have a mean of 50, right? So that's possible here. You could, remember, think about a population where, you know, you have a whole bunch of 10s uh, because every time you draw out 10, you replace it, right? So you could draw out a 10 again, right? So you could get a, a mean of 10, right? Here you could also get a mean of 10, and here you could also, oh wait, no, here you can't get a mean of 10. There's no mean of 10 here. Okay, so A cannot possibly go with C, but A could possibly go with A or B, right? I should probably call these a 1, 2, and 3, just so that we don't get confused, right? All right, but can A give a mean of 15 or 20, right? Can you put 10 and 50 together in any way and divide by 2 in any way to get 15 or 20 or even 30, or, or I mean, sorry, 25 or 35? No, right? There's no possible way 10 and 50 can be combined together and divided by 2 in any way to give you 15, right? But here we see that 10, um, here we can have a, a mean of 10, we could have a mean of 50, and we could have a mean of 30, which is 10 plus 50, so 60, divided by 2, which is 30, right? And those are the only three types of means you could have. So I would say A goes with that one, right? It's very limited. Then I would say B would go with this one, because in B you could have a mean of 10, you could have a mean of 50, but you could have all these means in between, because if you got 10 and 20 and average them together, that would be 15, right? And so this one has those possibilities, these uh, different possibilities, right? That, um, that this one doesn't have, it's missing, right? Ah. But let's move on to this one. Um, so here we know that you cannot have um, a mean of 10 or a mean of 50, but you can have a mean of 20, 25, 30. And so because of that, we know that this one goes with this one. And also we've used, we've used up all the other ones. So here we see that the things you have in your population limits the kinds of means that you'll see in your uh, sampling distribution of the mean. And here it's called sampling distribution of the sample mean, but same idea. 